Hey everyone, how's it going? I have uh, some paint drying on some cabinets, so I thought I'd come out here and check on the garden. We were gone for a week on vacation, and when we came back, we had some uh, tomato plants that were wilting. We thought maybe it didn't rain as much as it was supposed to while we were gone, because the weather reports really have been so widely inaccurate lately. But after a few days, it's pretty safe to say that we have some dying tomato plants, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Catch it, put it in a jar to have and to hold. To save for later, you cannot trust it to come again. To wait for you to find a pen and fill the paper with the message that it wants to send. It's a little disappointing to have some plants go like this, but it's a big uh, learning experience for us, so I'm just looking at it as an opportunity to learn. Uh, so I think, judging by the research I did, is that I either have a Vucerium or a uh, Verticillium fungal wilt, both of which start in the soil, uh, they enter the plants through the root system, and they clog up basically the vascular system. Uh, I think the Vucerium actually attacks cellular walls. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards maybe a Verticillium wilt, just because from what I read, it looks like the Fusarium creates a more yellowing of the leaves and these leaves are wilted but not really all that yellow. There's a few in there. Um, but in any case, the way I'm going to try to find this out is I'm going to pull up a plant, I'm going to make a vertical cut in the stem right above the soil, and what I should see if it is one of those two wilts is a dark brown coloration running up the stem. And if it's not that, then I have to go back to the drawing board and try to figure out what's going on. Obviously, I can't really 100% confirm anything without laboratory testing, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to try to make a best guess so that we can make a decision of what, what we should do from here. sure you can't really see very well but it does look like there's some brownish coloration in the stem. Um, it's not as dark brown as I thought it would be but it's definitely some brown streaking that runs up the uh, kind of capillary of the plant all the way up into here. Now that verticillium stops moving up the plant about 10 to 12 inches from the soil line so if we make some cuts up here, maybe we can see Yeah, I mean that looks pretty green. So, like I said, without laboratory testing, there's really no way to know for sure. <laughs> but the leaves, this uh, brownish coloration of the stem, and just the general uh, speed at which the plants went down, um, makes me think that it's probably verticillium wilt that we have. So what we do from here is I'm going to pull all the wilted plants out of the garden and burn them. Hopefully by doing that you know it, the disease won't spread. Um, the fungus is in the soil so there's a chance that the rest of our tomato plants and even our pepper plants might be hit. Hopefully we get some good uh, yields out of them uh, before that happens, if it happens at all. But I'll pull these out and then what we'll do is we'll just let the, this year run its course and I will uh, we'll probably solarize the bed, which means we'll, we'll lay plastic down and trap the heat during the hottest part of the year next year. And that will basically cook like the top three to four inches of soil. And so any kind of life in that top bit of soil will uh, be killed. A lot of your beneficial life forms are pretty mobile, so they will move like down into the soil. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly lose some good life in the soil, but a lot of that, a lot of that, uh, you know, your earthworms and your beneficial life will kind of move down away from the heat. 
your diseases and your negative funguses and things are kind of trapped in that top layer. So we'll, we'll solarize the bed, kill everything, and then it'll be a four or five year crop rotation of plants that are not in the, uh, the uh, nightshade family. And that should uh, clean up this bed and get rid of this wilt. Um, this is one of the reasons that I'm interested in doing raised perma beds or uh, permanent permaculture no-till garden. Uh, and that's something that we'll start to prep for towards the end of this year. These beds have been here for a while. They're tilled regularly. Um, they're very good beds. I mean, the, the soil's good in terms of nutrients, but you end up with problems like this where, you know, you have kind of dormancy, you have diseases that are able to, to kind of live in here and, and, you know, take out a crop of plants for you. So I'm hoping that by next year we can get into the perma bed situation and um, avoid these kinds of problems in the future. So obviously the tomatoes are a disappointment, but it's okay. You know, you don't really learn all that much from your successes. You learn from your failures. And this experience has taught me a lot. I feel much more well-educated about verticillium and fusarium fungus already. So, um, you know, it's all good. We'll pull these, uh, we'll, we'll do what we have to do to make sure that this doesn't happen again and cross our fingers that the rest of our tomatoes and our peppers make it through the year. One thing that may have been smart, I don't know, I'll have to do some more research, but I'm kind of thinking that it may have been a mistake to plant our tomatoes and our peppers right next to each other because they're in the same family. So they're both susceptible to the wilt. So maybe it would have been smarter to do the tomatoes and then separate them from the peppers from another, um, with another family of vegetables. I don't know, this is sort of one of the benefits of these kind of learning experiences is they get you thinking, they get you asking questions, and they get you reading. So that's what this is all about, getting better and learning what we can. Um, the rest of my day is going to be chopping and dropping, getting, taking care of this tomato issue, and then getting back inside and finishing up on some renovation projects before I get back into my shop and work on a few exciting upcoming instrument projects that I'm excited to show you. So if you have any information that I've left out in this video, please leave it in the comments. I'm excited to learn more. Um, if I have gotten anything wrong about verticillium or fusarium, please leave that in the comments or shoot me an email and I'll correct myself. Um, and that's it for this week. So until next time, be kind, be well, and work hard, and I will talk to you later. Grab it, hold it by its tail before it escapes. You know its ways and you cannot lose.